So please, again, Mario Kart 8 will be right after Super Mario World. So let's meet that incentive. I believe in y'all. All right, let's hear it for Rezifos in Super Mario World, all castles and forts, small only. Good luck, Rezzy. Thank you very much, Sky. We're gonna go ahead and start right away. There's not too much to talk about. So three, two, one, go. I am Rezifos or Rezzy. Most people call me Rezzy. If Couch can do a roll call real quick. Uh, I'm Seathorn. Yeah, that's TNT. I'm Author Blues. We got Xander over here, and we got Twitch Master down there. This is uh, all castles and forts, small only, which, uh, after some careful consideration, turns out to be the uh, most uh, arbitrary category that GDQ will accept for this game. <laughs> so uh, this level is especially difficult because all the enemies kill me in one hit. But I think that's also the rest of the game. One of the real joys of Super Mario World is you can spend the first uh, three and a half minutes or so explaining what we're actually doing, because for every single category, the first three and a half minutes doesn't really differ all that much. Uh, just getting out, out of uh, Yoshi's Island kind of gets us where we're going. So there's not much to talk about in this level. So in the next level, we're going to be seeing the first mid-air shell jump. Where I'm going to be attempting seven of those in this run, unlike the last SGDQs. Two. Yeah, so the point of doing all castles and forts with small only, I know it sounds incredibly arbitrary, and, and first and foremost, that's because it is. <laughs> um, but also, it's because it allows us to highlight a lot of stages that are really interesting for small only strats. Um, there are a lot of much more difficult stages uh, for small only strats um, that are featured in the full small only category 86 exits. Um, but that sort of those levels are, are so challenging, so uh, inconsistent that they really don't merit a marathon run. So this sort of narrows it down to the one that, ones that are particularly interesting um, without just reducing it all the way down to uh, small only, beat the game as quickly as possible. So here we'll see the first shell jump attempt, and he makes it. Nice. So this shell jump saves less than half a second, but it is the first attempt we'll see, and hopefully Rezzy can get a whole lot of shell jumps in this run. In addition to the seven mid-air shell jumps he talked about, there are also three other variants of shell jumps that are not seen in any categories other than small-only categories. Rezzy's really, in a lot of ways, the, the pioneer for these small-only categories. Um, he, he may not have invented every single strat, but I think it's hard to argue uh, that he is definitely the most consistent in our community at the strats that are involved in these categories. He's really sort of carved out his niche. I'd like to thank my, my main man, Jim's friend, for running small only like 11 years ago and getting the jankiest time ever. <laughs> And then we also have some other runners in the community. Uh, Lambie makes a lot of small only ILs. Uh, he invents a lot of the strats, some of the more complicated strats that we use in this. Here we're going into our first boss. For everything that makes Super Mario World interesting, its bosses are probably the the least interesting part of the run. Um, I don't know, man. Have you seen that Lemmy fight? It's true. That's a bunch of hot garbage. <laughs> you could probably fit in a donation here. You ready for some community love, Rezzy? I'm First ready. one is a $1,000 donation from Picante. Wow. Wow. And Picante says this is for Red Guy, who instead of accepting the $1,000 bounty for implementing the Super FX support, wanted us to donate it to SGDQ instead. Aww. Also, go Rezzy. Thank you so much, yeah, Picante. Picante has, a, Picante has an open bounty for a bunch of new features for the SD to SNES, and uh, Red Guy has done a lot of work for improving the support for all of those things, so that's really awesome that he wanted us to put toward this. So at the end of this level, we're going to see the second shell jump attempt. The first one saved only a fraction of a second, but this one saves about 40. half a minute. No, yeah, 35. And he nice. gets it again. 
The timing for that strat isn't just peculiar, but it's also extremely precise. Um, when you release and repress the Y button, when you uh, press left and right in order to turn around so you can basically throw the shell under your feet, it, it's pretty difficult to master. Uh, there's actually a ROM hack of this game that just counts the number of consecutive sh shell jumps you can do in a row in an infinitely scrolling level, and Resi, uh, I think, has a personal best of something like 20. Yep. I talked to a tester recently, and he let me know all of the uh, uncontrollable parts of Shell Jump, like uh, Mario's X subpixel, the Shell's X subpixel, Mario's oscillating speed, the uh, whether you throw it on an even or an odd frame. So yeah, it's a really cool trick. <laughs> Very consistent. Very. So, Seathorn, would you say that the first major wall for this uh, for this category, basically the levels that we've seen so far, have been relatively straightforward in their execution, aside from that one shell jump we saw? Uh, would you say that DP3 is probably the the one major roadblock, our first major roadblock coming up? Yes. Even though the shell jump in uh, DP1 is very important, you can if you miss the shell jump, you can still take the longer route through the auto scroller of DP2. But DP3 is one of the hardest small-only levels for new runners of any small-only category, and that's the one we're about to see coming up right now. For those who don't know, uh, we abbreviate all the levels. That's Donut Plains 3 that we're about to see. You probably can't tell because it says it in anime at the top of the screen. <laughs> So right here, he actually scrolls the screen uh, to make some Koopas spawn at specific points. This Koopa. Then he does a jump right there that's two or three frames in order to make it onto the on-off block. Reminder that all of this is happening with no ground underneath him. Oh, good. Okay, that was a good save. <laughs> Over the hole. Nice. Now in Donut Plains 4, there's a lot of these amazing flying hammer brothers, and their platforms go sway side to side, and if you actually walk on it while it's going to the right, it'll speed you up. I lost the shell that allowed me to do that, so that's all <laughs> a blow up. But. You can just run up that uh, little pink triangle to run up the wall. The fastest strat is to hit it with, a sh with the yellow shell at the beginning of the level. I'm going to get up close and personal with my TV here to make this jump. Okay, okay. and he makes it. That uh, trick we call underbro, and it's a two to three frame jump to make it under that Hammer Brother without slowing down at all. He spawned the Hammer Brother and then slowed down so it would be out of his way there. So here in the first room of uh, Morton's castle, I could skip the second room, but I need to do a wall jump up there. That's Tass only. With that attitude it is. In room three, we get to see one of the only vertical rooms in this category, really. And vertical levels, if you get... Oh! oh! Yes! Oh! <laughs> oh! So even though it looks like you can skip a cycle by making it up there, the wall jump is purely for swag. You can't actually skip a cycle. I was totally not even paying attention either. <laughs> that was like all <laughs> autopilot. So yeah, when you get a one-frame jump off the ground, uh, the screen's not going to scroll. So if I do this super fast, I'm going to be like off-screen the whole time. But the, uh, this isn't often. I swing out to the side there to get these guys out of the way. Oh. Oh. I did not swing far right enough. The dry bones in this game are, are well known for having the worst hitboxes. In that case, uh, he's slightly less impacted by how janky the hitboxes are, um, but you can come in this stage with a cape, and it, it's anybody's guess whether or not you're going to make it out with it, because even though the cape allows you to kill enemies, they just decide to disregard those rules once in a while. So Hold on, what's a uh, cape? Oh, we weren't supposed to tell him. Am I missing something? So the reason he grabs this spring right here and brings it up with him is so he can use it at the end of the level in order to bounce up to Morton's door a little bit faster. There he goes. You see there he swung wide when he was jumping up in order to get that one dry bones to move out of the way. A 
Oh. Uh. <laughs> so I guess we're pretty much at the point now where we need to know whether or not the fast red incentive was met, was it? It indeed was. Awesome. All right. I also have another real quick challenge here for Resi in the form of a donation from Kaizo Man who donates $96 for the 96 exits. And of course, Kaizo Man says, good luck, Resi. Get Chaco 3 first try, and I'll throw in oh. an additional $404 for the nice big round number. Wow. No pressure, though. Wow, Kaizo Man. Thanks, Kaizo Man. Creator of Kaizo. <laughs> So here in Vanilla Dome 1, we're going to see uh, one of those alternate shell jumps I was talking about earlier. So rather than using the normal shell, um, he's going to use the Buzzy Beetle shell, which the Buzzy Beetles actually wake up, and so you can use them uh, to give him a mid-air shell cool. jump without really needing to do much with them. I need someone here. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So by throwing it and catching it in midair, he set up its uh, momentum values in such a way that when he jumped in midair and it woke up, it actually woke up right underneath his feet, basically, for him to jump off of again. Here we've got a little mini wall show jump, not too big. Boop. Here we've got screen scrolling shenanigans with these green beans. It's mean. Terrible screen. So one thing that those uh, bouncer platforms are known for is that even if they appear to be on screen, a lot of times you can't bounce on them. Yeah, because of their properties being a, a sprite, just barely being off screen means they have absolutely no hitbox. And even when they're on screen, it's anybody's guess how they work anyway. Here we're going to play with some Koopas. There could be a bob -omb that spawns off screen up here. I don't know what causes him to be in the way, but sometimes he's just way too close. So right there on top of those yellow turn blocks, right. you can see that Rezzy took a very slight uh, detour to the left. And the reason he didn't jump straight across the spinies is because in Super Mario World, if you jump on two enemies at the same time, you can get uh, double sprited which is pretty much just getting killed by being inside one of the sprites while you're jumping on the other one. So he does a little setup at the beginning of this, um, just hesitates for one in-game second, and it actually sets up these dolphins in a, a pattern that will allow him to basically keep his full running speed uh, up until just the very end when he finally has to jump in the water. That was interesting. Nice. So we're here, here we're going to be heading into our first fortress. This is a vanilla fortress. It sits upon the vanilla tabletop. It says in the Japanese manual. I think this is the longest fortress. I don't think the auto scroller is even longer than this. Really? Well, you are swimming in water with no item in hand. Yeah. As we all know, items propel you forward when you hold them underwater, right? So at the end of this fortress, we're going to see the first example of the boss of all of the fortresses in Super Mario World, which is Reznor. Or in uh, the Japanese version, it's called Bui Bui. But in Super Mario World, they shoot fireballs, and these fireballs have very bad hitboxes. And also, they shoot fireballs randomly for RTA. So we'll see how these fireballs go. Yeah, despite the fact that these fireballs are going to be fairly large circles, they're actually quite small. Um, it's, it's only a, a special Oop. property of this room that makes them even look that size. And I forgot another thing that's bad about uh, Resnor is their platforms can teleport you to the side. If you jump right in the middle, they can teleport you straight left into the lava. Mm -hmm. 
let's not go into the two minute auto scroller right here. Yeah, I'd so rather not. Part of the routing for this means he's basically going to have to do both halves of Vanilla Dome. If you see speedruns of this game, for most categories, you either have to go on top, for instance, for like a No Star World category, or you're going to go bottom in order to do the All Castles category. But because we're doing both fortresses and castles, he had to do the fortress on top and the castle on bottom. So we're getting to see uh, our money's worth of Vanilla Dome. Oh. Don't get that. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> so that uh, jump, actually, to jump under that turn block in, in order to not bonk your head is actually a two to three frame jump. The reason a lot of things are two to three frames, or at least we assume they're two to, fra two to three frames, uh, Mario's speed oscillates between like four different sets of numbers. So depending on when you jump, it might. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. I'm supposed to enter the pipes. <laughs> So in a lot of categories that you might have seen run at GDQs previously, the normal exit of this, of this uh, level can be gotten by duping wings, which is one of the glitches in Super Mario World. But you can only dupe wings for a Yoshi. And of course, he can't use a Yoshi in this category, so he has to actually get the normal exit. Well, hold on. I wouldn't say obviously. Small Mario is uh, a lot of open doors there. But that level, the end of that level is a really fun level to play, so it is nice to play it in this category. I want to say sorry to that guy on Twitter who I think assumed there was going to be Yoshis in this category. <laughs> oh, uh, time for Red Switch Palace, by the way. Yeah, so in this level, uh, in the category, normally you would take the uh, normal exit to get, continue on through the rest of Vanilla Dome. But here, he's actually going to take the secret exit, and I'll let him explain why. So back when I was doing some attempts at this category, for absolutely no reason at all, I kept doing this secret exit. I don't know what compelled me to come this direction, but I just did it, and a friend of mine, Umar, just called it Red Switch Palace for the fans. So that's what we're doing. It. So, so I hope you all are fans. fans. Also, he's just collecting some extra one-ups for security. Despite the fact ah. he's doing a few extra levels that aren't necessarily uh, required for this category, uh, the strat that he actually did in there is much more difficult than the uh, considerably easier strat of just bouncing on the enemies without hitting the switch. And that's what we refer to as the fast red switch strat. So uh, hopefully you got your money's worth on that one. I believe someone in the SMW Discord said they would leave if I didn't yump, so... Rip. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Get on the vine. He doesn't want to. Hey, Resi, do I have time to squeeze in one quick donation for Definitely, yes. you love? Definitely, yes. We have a $1,000 donation from BK. <laughs> and BK also says, shout outs to Red Guy for implementing Super FX for SD to SNES, donating half of the bounty to GDQ in his honor. Swoopers here are a little tricky. All right, we're good. So one interesting mechanic that was shown off at the beginning of that level, kind of got a little bit messed up at the vine, is that when you enter water with some P-meter, which is the uh, hidden mechanic that builds up your running speed, uh, it actually gets conserved in the water, and when you jump out of the water, you can continue building it just where you were. So you can get P-speed faster out of water if you ran into the water. It also gets conserved when you climb a vine, right? Yes. yes. But if you fall off the vine, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Whee. Who knows what these are, dude? Their hitbox don't know what they are. Very sad moment for all those people that hit the P-switch before going in the door. So Vanilla Dome 3, the next level, is super long and has lots of rafts. I can hopefully skip two of the rafts with another mid-air shell jump. I believe. Oh. 
So, so again, he throws the shell upwards to store some downwards momentum on it, so he can bounce off of it right there. I'm going to sit on the end here so my visual cue will work. Time to run. That is a super tight jump off the raft. It is very obnoxious. Oh. Get the P-Speed. <laughs> so he has to jump off of this one tile block with P-Speed. Ah. Oh. oh. Very close. Well, now we get to see the rafts. Yay. Coin found. Let's go. Ah. You can enter that pipe. Oh, you can enter that pipe. Don't press down like I did before. It takes you backwards, I'm pretty sure. You could probably do another donation right here. Yeah, I was going to ask if you wanted some more love from your community. <laughs> All right, so we have a $50 donation from Sten53 that says avocado in big letters. Avocado. $20 donation from Zero Maverick. What's up, Rosie? I heard you were good at Mario or something like that. I thought I'd have said hello and just remind you of that time called Hey DJ Hedge. 10 out of 10, bro. Good luck and get them shell jumps. Let Rosie decide where this donation goes. Hello, Zero. Speaking of which, uh, we are now under $7,000 away from the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bonus tracks. Let's do this by the end of the run. Let's meet that incentive. Also, congrats on that uh, level, Rosie. So in the next level, Vanilla Dome 4, we're going to see uh, the first Bullet Bills in the Super Mario World. So the Bullet Bills kind of, sort of, follow specific patterns, but the patterns are dependent on the global frame timer, which depends on when you turned on the console and how long your run has been going. So you can make, you can make uh, strats that are kind of safe and avoid all the Bullet Bills, but the fastest strats usually rely on some random Bullet Bills. Thankfully we didn't get any rude ones earlier. I got one earlier today where he was just right in my face and I somehow did not run into him. And this level a little tricky. So Magic Koopa in the next level, since he's in the first room, our controller inputs are gonna determine where he's gonna sit. So I'm gonna do a duck on a line right in front of me here. Sorry, DSF, I'm not doing your strat. So he's going to spawn in pretty much the same spots. Oh, that's the worst spawn I could have gotten. Thanks. But uh, the duck there did make Magikoopa spawn in a specific spot the first time he spawned, and then he shot at Rezzy at a very specific spot and made a yellow Koopa appear, and that way Rezzy could just bounce down safely. He can make other things appear, such as a thwimp, and when you try to bounce down, it'll just kill you. Nah, if you bounce down, you'd probably just bounce off it. You don't want a normal jump. So here I'm going to wait here for the uh, ceiling on the right to match up with the top of my head so I can get some P-speed here and skip a cycle. Nice. I'm ready to do the same thing right here, sort of. Hopefully despawn that guy. Oh, no, whatever. Nice, yeah. And the spawns this is the worst in here boss are, in the game. Yeah. The spawns in here are RNG as wow. well. Thank the Lord. <laughs> it's good they didn't get any bad spawns there, because that boss can actually kill you in one hit, so. <laughs> hey Rezzy, someone wanted to say hi again. Can you guess who it is? Uh I don't know. It's BK, and he comes back with another $1,000 donation. Wow. BK says, son, I couldn't be more proud of you fighting all those Archaeosauruses while you are so small. I know you will grow up to be big and strong, hugs and kisses, dad. <laughs> <laughs> You're not my real dad. <laughs> wow, Rosie. He's not. <laughs> so right here, Rezzy's going to attempt one of the hardest levels in the game, or at least in this run. Wee. Because you need to continue to bounce on these saws 
in order to not ride the super slow platforms at the beginning. Yeah, these saws move just slightly faster, and by slightly, I mean almost twice the speed. And every time they kind of dip down for one of those shapes, they change their speed, and it's really just awkward to bounce on them. Nice. Okay. That strat is definitely very difficult. I have died there like seven times in a row before. <laughs> yeah, you have to know the strat first of all, and you have to be very familiar with just any backups if you did a high bounce instead of a low bounce, and just uh, adapting to any pattern that you find in the saws. Ooh, a shell. What should we do with it? That. <laughs> That shell jump skips walking through a few malls, and we all know there are enough malls in this level as it is. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't like moles. Heard got a little red switch handicap. Thanks, fans. <laughs> For all you know, your donations could have saved him right that moment. So the beginning of Ludwig's castle here, I'm going to scroll left and face left. I'm going to jump face left and scroll left so the screen actually scrolls. That's going to stop this bony beetle from being in the way. Even call it. Yeah, there you go. It lets you jump on him instead of him putting his spikes out. I'm not sure what that mushroom thing right there does. Screen scrolled here because all these guys definitely get right in your way. It's very obnoxious. Take it a little safe. Here we're gonna jump into a screen boundary so I keep my speed and I can just bounce on him quicker. And right here you're gonna see him jump on Ludwig while he's in midair. Hopefully and diagonally. Nah. And jumping on him while he's in midair allows you to get the third hit instantly. So that lets you skip an entire cycle of the shell moving back and forth like it did in the first phase. Yep, for some more community love, Rosie. Yep. All right, we have $15 from Dots Are Cool. cool. Uh, Super Mario World, oops, only small Mario, my favorite. <laughs> uh, $10 from Monty. Hey guys, Monty here. I was saving my donation for later in the week and I had to donate during my least, I mean my favorite game, Super Mario World. The SMW community has been my home and family for the last few years and I'm thankful for every single member of it. So good luck and have fun, Rosie. Also, remember that if all castles in Fort Small only could do it, so can you. <laughs> it's the category that never gave up. Bye, Yoshi. I'm gonna get this star because I want a couple extra lives. You never know. Also, this star uh, lets you make the ending of the level a whole lot easier. In order to do the fast strat, or actually, that's in a different category. Here we use the P stored in this balloon to get the secret exit. The other exit, at least. <laughs> Gotta wait. <laughs> Unfortunately, a human cannot wall jump on a wall like six times in a row, so we're gonna have to do this level the intended way. There's that wall. Bye wall. Oh. So that's a one frame trick if this was Ocarina of Time. Entering doors is known as one of the hardest things to do in the Super Mario World community. 
Yeah, at full running speed, you have three frames to open the door. So in Forest of Illusion 4, there are these Lakitu's in pipes, and I have no idea what their hitbox is, but it doesn't agree with me. So someone might kill me, someone might just destroy my P-Speed, but if hopefully you, not. If you jump on top of these Lakitu's while you have P-Speed, sometimes you can bounce off of them, and sometimes they'll just completely get rid of your P-Speed. It just depends on where you bounce on them. They were all very nice today. We're going to not fall in the hole behind the key. So this level is quite possibly one of the hardest IL strats, and I'm going to go for it. In all of SMW. He's to keep P-Speed on this one tile block. Ah. Uh, now so. I just have to wait here. If he kept P-Speed on that one tile block, then he could jump off of that, bounce on some more Koopas, do a shell jump, bounce on some more Koopas, keep P-Speed on a one tile block, and then do another shell jump. So an incredibly d difficult IL. But instead, we're writing this. Yeah. Got any donations? <laughs> Absolutely. We have a $20 donation from Reaper Goblin that says, love playing the game as a kid, love speedrunning this game. Best of luck, Rezzy, for an amazing run. Also, I have a $10 donation from Master of Pants. Here's my 10 for Rezzy to put to his choice. Good luck on the run and have fun. And we are now under $5,000 now from the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bonus tracks incentive. We can do it, we're almost there. We've actually got an auto scroller fortress now, so if you want to keep going. Ooh, sounds good. Uh, $30 donation from Mike135. Hi, Rezzy and SMW fam. Kill that run. I don't know what to actually put here, but my mom is also watching, and I'm sure she says hi too. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. $20 donation from Dark Frock. Greetings from the front row. I've been watching GDK streams and videos since 2014. Being a part of the live crowd with my wife for the first time is an experience of a lifetime. Thank you for everything you do for such a great cause. $100 donation from Grim1383. Yo, Resi, good luck on the run. All of us here in the SMW community are rooting for you. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Thanks, Red Switch. <laughs> $100 donation from Ryujin, 200cc Baby Card, 200cc Big Blue, 200cc Hyrule Castle. You know you want these. Let's hit the Mario Kart 8 16 track bonus incentive. Go and do it now. Some things are going to happen. So right Nintendo was nice enough to put that uh, very long auto scroller right at the beginning of the hard level instead of at the end of it. That was a great stage. Get out of here. What a terrible namesake. I think we know this community member real quick. $20 from Truman114 that says, I've been running this game for five years and I still don't know what a mushroom does. I thought watching this would help, but I guess this run is cool too. Good luck. I love you, Truman. Now we're going to go back to Forest Illusion 4. We didn't play it enough. Thankfully, it's actually faster to do this level instead of Forest Illusion 1 again, because the end of that level is a luck fest. Whoa. <laughs> we call this, that middle pipe, we call that the Darbian pipe. Uh, you go in that pipe and you get like a backwards, ultra slow water level. It takes you backwards. And it goes backwards. Mario was never meant to go left. No. So we talked about uh, holding items and swimming faster, just like in real life. We're going to do that in this level. And it saves a lot of time. Can I squeeze in a couple more donations, Rosie? Uh, sure. 
We have a $150 donation from Mark Ford that says, I'm a long time watcher of GDQ, but this is my first donation. The Mario Block has been incredible thus far, and good luck to Rezifos. Also, shout outs to Author Blues. Hope you get that 90 minute link to the past soon. Yikes. Oof. You want to talk about yikes, Doth? He spelled your name with an uppercase A, and he separated Author and Blues from each other. Double yikes. <laughs> Not the thing you want to do, you hate to see that happen. So right here, it's very key. Oh, uh, in order to get the fastest time in this level, it's very key to kick that uh, throw block really quickly in order to despawn one of the urchins. I have to have been one pixel away from hitting that guy right there. This is wild. Good. Now we're gonna dance with some fish at the top here. How's it going? How's it going? Bye. You can lose like a second and a half just from lag at this part. So Force of Illusion 3 is one of the only levels, it is the only level where there's like an actually reli reliable shell jump, not shell jump, wall jump. Wall jump. So in Super Mario World, unlike in some other Mario games, a wall jump is not just a one-frame yes. trick. It actually relies a lot on your uh, speed when you enter the wall and on your sub-pixels. Uh, but this is the only level that, uh, where it's actually just a one-frame trick. Your sub-pixels are all good, your speed is all good if you just run right at the beginning of the level. And right here he's going to grab this Goomba and bring it into this pipe. Because now this, we have to get into the key. I call this bashing my head against the wall simulator. So here we have another example of uh, subpixels and speed at play. He needs to throw this Goomba into the wall and have it clip through this cement block and hit the turn block. As it turns out, they never really considered trying to play this entire game small only. I'll pay for your medical fees, Goomba, if you just go in right now. Fortunately, because he carried it through the pipe, um, I think it won't wake up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boy. It's only a 10% chance in one pixel. Come on. Please, Resi Oof. needs your energy. Oof. 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 Might be the second worst ever. There yeah. we go. That's actually the fastest anyone has ever done that in this game. So. <laughs> and to add insult to injury, you can actually have the Goomba clip into the wall a one tile too low. He'll just fall in there with the key without hitting the turn block. Poor guy. You can read some donations. We're just riding this blog snake for a while here. All right, we have a $5 donation from the Shinobius that says, Hope Rezzy has a shell of a time with this SMW run. Oof. Had to have at least one pun there. Oof. $15 donation from Lucas Aurelius that says, Go Rezzy, you're killing this run. Hopefully that came in during the run, not... Never mind. What are you implying? I'm just saying that comment could have not aged well. All right, anyways, moving on. We have a $10 donation from Rich that says, I will donate another $50 if Rezzy gets first try Chocolate Island Strike. You have a lot of pressure on your this Chocolate Island, This is a lot of pressure, Rezzy. guys. What a, what? First Kaizo man and now Rich. I feel bad for you. Sorry, bud. Oh, it's good that all of the platforms decide to despawn there. <laughs> There's supposed to be three platforms and a statue. Mm -hmm. I guess we got one out of the four. We get another donation. 
Sure, no problem. We have a $20 donation from Mildew that says, I remember watching the Small Only Resi run a couple years ago and had my mind blown, and now I'm grateful to be able to watch this run from the back couch live. Much love. Hi, Mildew. <laughs> $50 donation from Red Dragon 123 Incentive suggestion, bonus graphing calculator Mario speed run. I think we've all done that at some point. Uh, if you check my YouTube, I've got Super Mario Land in like 50 minutes for the TI-84, everyone's favorite platform. Officially licensed, of course. Mm, you sure? Fun fact, the, uh, the level here... Ooh, um, what in the world? The midway point doesn't even spawn unless you go through the cannon. Um, there, it's basically two separate rooms, but uh, there's usually, if you've played this, a uh, midway tape in this level, um, and there's no midway tape if you don't go through that cannon right there. It's supposed to appear right there on top of the screen. I honestly have no idea how I died on that guy. It was probably the running into him. Oh, okay. That's a good point. Early feedback, we'll check the tapes. So Chocolate Ghost House has everyone's favorite fish and boo. Uh, playing small, you pretty much have no issue with them, and you kind of taunt them a little bit at the end here. So I'll do that. A little point of the lore, I don't think a lot of people know this, but this is actually the same boo that we encountered earlier in Forest of Illusion, and he's mad. Hi there. Ooh, suicide door, that's, that's, that is a really narrow window to hit that. And bouncing on that diagonal boo line is actually really difficult because you can flip through the boo and hit the boos that are following his line and they can yeah, kill you. Yeah, the very front boo you can bounce on, but all of the other boos can kill you but can't be bounced on. So you have to hit the front one without touching any of the others and that's uh, easier said than done. So in the first room here, I'm going to collect like some amount of coins over five and that'll send me to a room that has a dragon coin in it. And if I get all the dragon coins, I'll get a final room that is a bit faster. I'm going to have to enter the second pipe when the timer is at or under 249. And I'm very forgetful, so if the crowd could help me out with that. 249. Basically, if he goes in too early, this one's on you. Yeah. All right, and this is in wait. order to get... Wait. Wait. Now? No. No? Oh, he's going to get me. He's going to get me. Oh, hey. Okay. So you have to enter the pipe under a 249 on the in-game timer in order to get the normal exit as opposed to the secret exit. Yeah, a lot of people growing up may not have fully understood what was going on in this stage, but the second pipe you encounter, no matter what room you're in, the second pipe switch. you encounter is entirely dependent on the stage timer. So. Rosie, I got one more request for Chocolate Island 3. Oh, we no. got a $15 donation from Abutu that says, Hey, Rosie, I'll donate another 25 if you get the mid-air shell jump at the end of Chocolate Island 3 on the first try. Good luck. That's right now, by the way. Please, no more bullying. So the first time I did a run that contained this level, it might have taken me three and a half hours. Just for this level. He's Just since cut level. it down considerably. Maybe. Conservative estimate. So he actually needs to get both of these shells right here uh, and keep them to do two shell jumps at the end of this level. Oh. oh. That was our first try. So one of the things that makes this level hard is not only the two shell jumps that you have to do at the end here, which are extremely difficult, but the fact that you have to do the entire level every time you want to attempt this. And this is not an easy level. Jumping on all of these Koopas is really tight. I blame Lamby. It's his fault for finding out how to do it. Uh, 
I imagine with uh, three and a half hours worth of attempts, you've probably gotten pretty decent at beating this level. Yeah. Only once have I grabbed the gold tape there. Thankfully. Ah. So that's one of the uh, alternate variants of a shell jump that we were talking about earlier. That first one, he needs to keep P speed, then run into the shell on the very left of it in order to kick it forward. But he also needs to not run into it too left, or else he'll bash the shell that he's holding into that one. So if you ask me, I haven't even attempted it once. I mean, I've not even gotten to this shell jump, so I'm pretty sure those donations still stand, in my honest opinion. You'd have to be a fool not to honor that. <laughs> Again. good about this one, though. I think showing his consistency with the beginning of this level is really impressive. Thanks, T. <laughs> He's gotten that consistency from doing this so many times. <laughs> oh. oh. So you can see right there, he got the first shell jump, and then he has to get another one. It's just two shell jumps. Hopefully some love will help you get through this, Rezzy. Uh, we have $10 from Third Lava Dolphin that says, Hey, Rezzy, great run so far. Loving all the avocado action, and I wish I could have come. Money goes to Rezzy's choice. Avocado. I'm not going to jump on that guy, because SMW will sometimes just steal both your shells. What a thief. You know, in hindsight, those, li those lives are not a bad idea. So I got a quick question for Arthur Blues here. We do have a $10 donation from Cujo Sun 208 said, so Rezzy said that could have been the second worst Goomba Key get. The logical question that follows is, what was the worst time? I have definitely timed out in that level before and died. It took too long. That was still the second best attempt, though, the time he died. If you get it this time, I will pull up the tracker on my phone from the couch and donate $50. Oh. Oth, we're not supposed to be putting more pressure on poor Rezzy here. You realize that. I'm trying my best. Thank God I did not have $50. <laughs> All right, we have $100 from Matt Kava that says, amazing run so far, Rosie. The SMW was the game that got me into speedrunning a decade ago. So it was always pure joy to see it ran at GDQ, even in this funny, ever not so Super Mario style. Best of luck on the run, and here's another hundred dollars for the Mario Kart 8 bonus tracks incentive, which we are close now. We are under 3,000 away from that, so let's hit it by the end of this run.
first try. So, just just to let you know, uh, even if I got that midair, that still wasn't the end. I can easily miss that jump by like one pixel. Yeah, we weren't mentioning that yet. I was hoping it wouldn't happen, but it has happened before. You can miss that by less than a tile. You are inside the tile, but you don't make it on top. So believe it or not, Rezzy, somebody called their shot right in the middle of you actually getting that. Uh, Kaizo Man did donate the $404 anyways. Thank you, creator of Kaizo. And Kaizo Man says, oops, my hands flipped anyway. <laughs> We've got two more castles, we've got one more fortress, and some number of exits. I guess that's more than three exits. Feel free, feel, feel free to count as we go. I have no idea what the hitbox on those things are. It's somewhere. It's definitely not diagonal. Holes. So someone's still thinking of your Taco Island, uh, Resi. $15 from Mike 99 Mom said to donate more because you said hi back. Please get a good Chaco for us, Resi. Whoops. Oops. Yeah. We're getting a nice little bit of P speed. We're going to go under a chuck. A little spooky. Thanks. Oh, okay. <laughs> now we've got Wendy's. So one thing that's a little bit interesting about Rezzy's play style is that he claws the controller, which is holding Y with your thumb and actually pressing X with your index finger, to kind of wrapping your hand around the controller in Wendy's castle. I, yeah, I only do claw like this and this because of that. Ah. That that's jump, a tough jump to manage your height just right to go under that. The jump to get under that saw is two frames. Should I do it again? I guess not. <laughs> we'll secure the win here. You can't actually skip through this crusher, but it's luck-based again because of Mario's speed, a bunch of other jank. Gonna hold jump off of both of these ledges to uh, slow down slightly so that ceiling is a little bit higher. I don't like doing it at the lowest height. Yeah, in Super Mario World, if you're falling, if you hold the jump button, you slow down a little bit when you fall, and you can use that to set up uh, certain strats. Ah. follow-ups on this run, Rosie. We have $100 from Rich, who says, first try, Ooh, plus 50. I know it's not first try, but at least you got it. Ah, first try, IMO. Another $5 from Vanimation that says, bonus tracks, bonus tracks. We're so close right now. Almost about 2K away, let's do it by the end of this run. And also $50 from Super Mike. When is Oops All Ice going to be available to the public? Looks like it'd be pretty good quality cereal. Let's just hope it's not water. Also, good luck on the run. Oops All Ice. Speaking of water, we're about to enter a very fun water level. And yeah, we have the sunken ghost ship here. This is an ice. So we're going to get uh, in a little bit here. He's going to slow down for just a second. 
And the reason he does that is to try to get this boo cloud in a very specific spot so that it'll appear right as another boo ring is supposed to be coming on screen. And the boo cloud will actually despawn the boo ring so he can swim right through. It's a yes. little behind, but I think. So there's a trigger okay. right here that appears on screen that is supposed to stop the boo cloud. Um, but by keeping it around just long enough, he despawned a boo ring that was just down there at the bottom of that screen. Swimming through this thing is way too spooky. We're going to wait on that. Okay, so this is uh, a fairly Dragon long points. just falling level. Um, and at the very end of it, there's an item uh, that he's going to pick up. And we have a tradition in the Super Mario World community. Uh, and we could very much use the help of uh, both Twitch chat and the audience here. As soon as he collects this item, uh, we, we like to loudly announce what that item is. If you, if you don't know what it is, you can probably ask your neighbor. for a sec. I got a $50 donation. As I was saying, I got a $50 donation from someone named Guy on the Couch. Oh, <laughs> I wonder who that is. And it says, I got your couch, dude, even if Rezzy missed that particular attempt. Oh. I'd really like to thank twitch.tv slash guy on the couch for donating. <laughs> Sounds like a nice guy. Also thanks Red Switch at the beginning of this level. And the fans. Oh! No. Too fast. Again. Man, I know Thank you said you this fans. was one of your favorite levels, but you didn't have to do it twice for us. <sighs> Most people do scroll in this level because this jump up here on the munchers is super awkward. You have to actually release the jump button and then re-grab it in midair uh, so that you don't hit the ceiling. If you hit the ceiling, you start falling earlier and you'll fall straight onto the munchers. Hey. So a couple things real quick here. First of all, you're popular with the couch, Rosie. I don't know if you saw this coming out. $50 from Bat Couch Avocado Shirt Girl. That just says avocado. I didn't know anyone else had an avocado shirt. What's going on here? Now, for a couple more exciting things here. I believe we just did met the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bonus track. So thank you, everyone, who donated towards that. Thank you. And also, we just crossed $900,000 for GDQ. <laughs> to the million. Thank you, everybody. Did you just clap? Yeah, we got time. This goes on for about nine years, so you can do some more donations. <laughs> All right, let me see what I can find here. I'm just looking for some more potential couch people here. But I did find something else here. Ten dollars from someone called Ooh, a mushroom. <laughs> That's never happened before. <laughs> you hate to see that happen, Rosie. Well, you that actually hate to see that my happen. Bingo card. <laughs> All right, a ten dollars from someone called a mushroom that says, "Does anyone know who I am?" No. Evidently not. What's a mushroom? All right, let's see what else here. I'm gonna try really hard and press this D-pad this time. If only there were a button that would make you move out of the way. Okay, here's another pun here. Hundred dollars from Anonymous, give him shell res. Ah. I'm sorry, I don't think there's any more shells. Can't give you any more. He's used them all up in CI3. Ugh. Oh. All right, an important debate here. $10 from someone named uh, Jillian Jenkins that says, important question, is small Mario a baby or just a short Mario the world needs to know? He's very short. I'm so glad you asked. Short. 
Also, we have a $2,000 donation from Anonymous who says we cannot let any incentive left unmet. Thank you, Anonymous. Much love. Scroll right here to get this mole out of my way. I just don't even want to deal with it, especially after that and dying. Thankfully, we get to see the level again because we're going to have to come back. Isn't that exciting? This level is actually probably my favorite level because the strat in the third room is just great. It's not super duper difficult, but it's fun. The intentional strat is to run all the way to the right, pick up a door, and get a P-switch. But why would you use a P-switch when you can do this? Just like that. Larry's Castle. Uh, there's a Magic Koopa in the second room. He's even more annoying this time. He's mad. He's super mad from Lemmy's. Now we get to sit here for a moment. See some nice rotating ball and chains. I'm surprised that worked. I don't know what those things do, I just kind of jump over them because it's fun. Oh, nice. You want a shell because I don't want to deal with Magic Koopa again. Die, thanks. Whoa! <laughs> uh, underball at BK? <laughs> I really like this room. Do donations like this room? I think donations would love this room, honestly. All right, so we have a $20 donation from Patsikin that said, had to donate for that awesome double shell jump. First try. Here's $20 towards getting the bonus tracks in Mario Kart. $150 from Mad Titan 1980. Been watching all week, had to donate during the Mario block. Enjoying the run in Mario Kart bonus tracks. All right, sir. Come on. Oh, Ooh. the double. I'll wait. I'll wait again. He really doesn't know how to aim downwards. Overball. His wand just isn't calibrated for short people. So one more element of the game wanted to say hi, Rosie. Uh, Ten dollars from the sandbar that says, gotcha. <laughs> Kick that thing and cross the country. What I want to know is why does he have to enter the castle and take out the Koopaling first when he could just like mop the castle down or kick it or blow it up? He's really not using his head here. I love this level, it's so fun. You could probably fit in some more donations here. All right. $25 from Lucerson59. Oh my gosh, I almost missed seeing the entire Mario block live. I gotta donate while I still have caught the tail end of it. Thank you all for putting on such a glorious marathon. $50 from Pancaker King. Good luck and shout out to my supervisor who got me into speedrunning. Now to get my wife addicted. I mean, into them as well. Thanks for giving us a creative and fun way to do our donations. $50 from Sedgelikin. Mario Block is always the best. What a better way to end it than with more tracks. Someone knew evidently what a mushroom is. $5 from Irish WW that says, a mushroom or toadstool is the fleshy, spore-bearing, fluting body of a fungus typically produced above ground, on soil, or on its food source. Ah, uh, I see. Bunch of oh. nerds.
$5 from Kevin that says, Rezzy is like an ice cream on a hot summer day. So right there, he just got to jump uh, with P-Speed to make it up to the top without having to wait for the uh, sandbar to come up, which is, I think, a three out of five chance to make it up there. Every time I've watched him do this, he gets it second try. Every time. You mean this level? No, no, I'm talking about you go for it the first time you go through the level. Yeah. Keep some P-Speed here. And overball. Under crusher. Uh, good. Ooh. Get Ooh. out of here. God. Who would na oh! Oh! <laughs> No! It was only a it matter of time. It was almost over. Who could have seen this coming? This is so sad. <laughs> There's the teleporting platforms. There was no way to predict this. What idiot would name themselves after this stupid boss? <laughs> that all the time. At least this level's cool. That was definitely too slow. All right, bruh. Can you not? Thank you. There we go. So that was the last fort of this category. Last Reznor he has to fight. Now we're going to the back door of Bowser's Castle here. They actually put a midway in this level, even though it's infinitely shorter than actual Bowser's Castle. Uh, okay. <laughs> I honestly do not know why they would put a midway in a one-room level, but they really did that. So I'm going to have to dodge it. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Rezzy, you're popular with couches tonight. We have $10 from someone named The Couch from Indiana that says, watching from a couch in Indy, heard there was a couch fest happening. Hi, Indiana. Holy cow, we have couches here, too. We're on one. I think in a lot of ways, we're not all that different. So right here, he keeps one of the first Mech Koopas, then throws it up then in order to keep this Mech Koopa now, which he can bring straight into phase two. Rezzy, I gotta bother you one more time. We have another $1,000 donation from BK that just says Underball. Underball. Not sure why he's throwing those things. So right Sir? here, he gets to use this Mech Koopa. And mm, that might have been pretty early. Mm, it seems good. And yeah. skip one of Bowser's uh, balls that he throws out. We've got one more phase. We're going to use this Koopa to hit him very early. Once you hit Bowser in phase one, he drops to five bounces from seven. So he'll just do five right away since we're gonna hit him with this one. And there goes the last mushroom. Guess one we'll, we'll not find out what it is. And time. time. Nice. Yeah. 
I gotta hold the up button here. Also runs in validation. Yeah, we gotta get the we gotta get the true ending. And I think there's a little surprise in store for the true ending. Hurry it up a little, you two. Oh, that one's shaped like a heart. <laughs> Unfortunately, what with the true ending and all, we now what? find out what the mushroom <laughs> does. Big. It's I, over, dude. I don't think the game well, really knows what category you're playing. I can't believe this. Again, I want to shout out Lambie and Jim's friend and Dram and Link Dead. They all found a lot of the strats. Well, a lot of them worked together to find Chocolate Island 3, mostly Lambie and Jim's friend. A couple other small only levels. Lambie found most of the strats for pretty much every level in the game. And uh, if you want to learn SMW, you can go to smwspeedruns.com. We've got a wiki and all the links to everything there. Thanks to everyone on my couch and the commentators. Yeah. Huge shout out to Rezifos. I don't think that there's really uh, too many people in our community. Uh, I, I dare say maybe even no one who could have pulled off a run this challenging uh, in a marathon setting. He's kind of proven himself time and again with these really challenging small only categories, so. Thank you, Arthur Blues. No problem, Rezifos. Would you have been related to that guy who uh, was on the couch and donated? No, I just sit near him. Okay. Something's going on back there. <laughs> I think the true ending is the friends we made. Not the front camera. <laughs> Get in here, Twitch Master. <laughs> there you go. Make me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, GDQ, for letting me do this run. Uh, Vulgen wasn't on the uh, games committee. Maybe that's related. Thank you. Yeah. Whoa. Let's hear it one more time for the entire 2D Mario community. Runners, commentators, donors, thank you everybody for your love tonight. This has been a fantastic Mario block. And we continue next with uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, including the bonus tracks. Thank you, everybody, for helping us meet that incentive. We have a $15 donation from Run249 that says, hey, buddy, you missed some power-ups back there. Better go back and pick them up. $25 donation from Jason Bowman. Hey, Couch, throw out more oddly specific numbers like 50 or 25 to entice donations. Let's break last year's record. $20 donation from Frito48. Never watched a speedrun before. I think I just found my new favorite thing. That double jump was insane. Can't wait to see more. $20 donation from the Jerry Peace. Had to donate for a chance at that awesome power glove. It's bad, so bad. Also donating because the road to two million starts at one million, so let's it go. $10 donation from Rezzy. Hi Rezzy, other Rezzy here. Had to throw in a few bucks for someone who made me super confused for a couple of minutes as to who kept saying my name.
All right, that about does it for me here as your host. I'm Sky Bills. It was an honor to host the TD Mario Block. And now I leave you in the capable hands of Arlenia for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Thank you again, everybody. All right, hello everyone. My name is Arlenia, and I'm going to be hanging out with you through the next few games. Coming up, we have Aeon Frodo running Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and you guys did meet the incentive for the bonus track, so you'll be seeing that as well. Adam74 donates $10, saying there's another $50 if someone can actually pronounce Médecins Sans Frontières close to correctly. So I studied French for about four years, so I hope that was close enough for the $50. Thanks, Adam74. Luigi36 donates $20 and says, Hey, bro, thanks for leaving all those mushrooms behind for me. I get to do an all-a-mushroom run after this, all right, bro?
Andrew219 with $50. First GDQ I've ever watched, and it just so happens to be right next door. Roseville, represent. Speedrunning community is amazing. Doctors Without Borders is amazing. And what an amazing Mario block so far. I agree. This has been a pretty amazing Mario block so far. And we have Mario Kart coming up to look forward to. Sarah 178 donates $25 and says, Loving the Mario block, watching in Wisconsin with my sweetie, who is here from the UK. Glad we get to watch together this time, and go Rosalina! Bob Otto gives $50, says, let's get some Half-Life going. And just a quick update on one of our bonus games, which is Half-Life Any Percent. We need a $50,000 uh, incentive, and we're right under $9,000 before we meet that incentive. We're sitting at about $41,924 and some change. So we would love to see that. It's an amazing run. So go ahead and funnel your donations in to get that bonus game here for you guys. Adam147 again, giving another $50, saying, very much so, mon plaisir. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it, putting those years of uh, college to use. The Bogar Games donates $50. This one goes to the Half-Life Any Percent because we all need a little more Freeman in our lives. Can I get a little hype from the crowd? Very nice, very nice. <laughs> 